Since an intriguing takeover in 2017, Barnsley have raised their ambitions and implemented a different vision at the club to progress. With the owner who's been the subject of a Hollywood film, managers appointed from foreign clubs in an attempt to bring the attractive Moneyball system to the club, this is the story of Barnsley and how they've become a dark horse in the championship. In recent years, Barnsley have been a club moving between the Championship and League One. Beginning in 2013-14, being relegated from the Championship, two years later a promotion from League One. 2017-18, relegated again from the Championship, but instead this time bouncing straight back the season after with an automatic promotion. Then, quite miraculously, Barnsley were able to avoid relegation in 2019-20 with a 91st minute winner over Brentford on their last day of the season. Therefore meaning that Barnsley could evaluate their position in the league, steady the ship a little and try and move up the table with higher ambitions under new ownership. But before that, let's look into where this story began in December 2017. That's when the takeover was completed, the 19th of December to be exact, when they sat 20th in the championship just before the relegation. Taking over Barnsley was Chinese billionaire Sean Lee, an owner of many football clubs including Belgian side KVU Stende, FC Thun in Switzerland, AS Nancy in France, and former owner of Liga 1 side OGC Nice. But also part of the consortium was Billy Bean, who was previously an advisor to Dutch club AZ Alkmaar, but more well known for being the focus of Hollywood film Moneyball, where actor Brad Pitt played the part of Billy Bean. Moneyball focuses on Billy's success working under financial constraints, fielding a competitive baseball team using analytical data. They look to undervalued statistics that could help the team offensively, taking a different perspective on how to field a team, gaining an advantage with the smaller amount of money that they had. The model he introduced in baseball had an impact, especially when the film was released in 2011, as it then had a rolling effect on other sports in including football. We've seen clubs in recent times use this system, Brentford, Leicester City, Southampton and Brighton, but especially across Europe with RB Leipzig and RB Salzburg who we'll talk about more in the video. Billy had shown interest in football previously and then got involved with the Barnsley takeover. It's understood that he has a 10% stake in the club. Sean Lee said Billy is very passionate about football but his focus is baseball. We're going to use his philosophy, we'll expand what Barnsley did in the past couple of years. Their strategy was focused on England so we're now going to expand this base to Germany, France, Holland. Portugal, South Africa. This will involve analysing the players and how to pick players using big data. Barnsley had already found success in selling players on for significant higher amounts than what they paid for them. Examples such as Conor Hurrihan signing in 2014 for just over £200,000, later being sold for £3 million. Alfie Mawson, Barnsley got him on a free transfer in 2015 and sold him on a year later for over £5 million. As well as Ethan Pinnock, he signed from Forest Green Rovers for £500,000 in 2017 and two years later was signed by Brentford for £3 million. Pound. That's why Mr. Lee highlighted the fact of expanding this strategy to European clubs and that is one of the goals behind the takeover. Before the next part, if you could please like the video, it's very much appreciated as it really helps the videos in getting found. So let's take a look at the managerial decisions the owners have made and where they've attempted to change the way the club plays its football. Upon their arrival, the manager was Paul Heckingbottom, but come February 2018, Paul decided to leave to become the manager at Leeds United. In a statement, Barnsley said that they were shocked by the decision that he took, especially after agreeing a new contract contract the week before and helping him get his January transfer window targets. Following his departure, Jose Moraes was appointed, but he only lasted a few months. A clause in his contract allowed Barnsley to terminate it should they be relegated, which they were. Coming in after him was Daniel Stendhal in 2018. His first season in charge saw him gain promotion with Barnsley, a very impressive 91 points, scoring 80 goals. In the Championship, however, his start wasn't so good. 10 games without a win controversially saw him sacked. A favourite for the Barnsley fans and the decision was seen as reactionary. Not made any better as they sold Kiefer Moore, his top scorer in the League One promotion season, and Ethan Pinnock who played every minute of that season too. The squad was then built of a lot of young players without too much experience at this level. Although this summer transfer window did see progression with the recruitment strategy coming into place. And well, they might have overdone it with the amount of young players that they brought in on cheap deals, which is what the manager said about his team. Like Mr Lee said, where they looked to sign players had to expand and in the summer of 2019 we saw signings from Germany, Austria, Denmark and Belgium. Gerhard Struber was their next manager to be appointed and this is where things got interesting for Barnsley. You see, he was previously the manager of RB Salzburg youth teams in FC Liefering, the feeder club to RB Salzburg. A great option for Barnsley as he'd been part of the Red Bull chain who are now well known for buying young talent and selling them on for huge amounts of money. So this wasn't just an appointment of somebody to manage their team, it was to be part of the strategy of the club and bring contacts that he had. He'd got experience of working under a Moneyball system, managing young players so it suited what Barnsley were trying to achieve. In his time at the 
the club, the recruitment strategy continued and some interesting moves were made. Firstly, signing two of his former players from Austrian side Wolfsburg AC for a combined sum of £900,000 for the duo. One of them has become a first-team regular, Michael Solbauer, the centre-back captain Barnsley against Norwich this season. And another signing of his in January 2020 was for Kylian Ludwig on loan from RB Salzburg. Now, what we saw here was the contacts and experience that Struber had from being at Salzburg playing a part in a signing for the club. He was able to tie connections to other teams in world football with similar projects to Barnsley. You could see that there was progression being made under the Austrian. From the beginning of 2020 to the end of the 19-20 season, Barnsley were 13th in the form table, getting 8 wins and 4 draws from 21 matches. This was the season where they survived with that last minute goal and after this improvement had to be made to the squad. So in came new players in the summer of 2020, including Austrian winger Dominic Frieser for £700,000, a player that felt comfortable joining because of the Austrian connection that he had with the manager. Come the start of 20-21, Struber said, we can't score and this is our challenge. You can see in the last few games we need reinforcements, especially a new striker. However, just as they seem to have the right manager, to help with the strategy of Barnsley and to help with the young players and to have players he wanted in the team, an opportunity came along for him to manage the New York Red Bulls in America, who are one of the clubs part of the Red Bull network. After previous experience of managing in the Red Bull system, he was a top option for them, but unfortunate for Barnsley. So, after his departure, who did Barnsley look to appoint next to keep their ambitions high and to continue with the recruitment strategy? Well, for them, there was only one manager that made a lot of sense to appoint, Valerian Ismail. He'd been managing Austrian side LASK up until he was sacked on July 11th and was in fact the manager for the Europa League match against Manchester United earlier in 2020. In both legs of that tie, Dominic Frieser, prior to his transfer to Barnsley, started in the team for Ismail. Frieser joined Barnsley because of the Austrian connection he had with Struber, and when he was sacked, he was feeling worried about his departure. However, he went on to say, I was 100% happy when I heard Valerian is coming here. We had a really, really good time last year. I think we won 35 out of 40 games. He's a really good coach. That brings us to present day Barnsley. So, where do they currently stand? The start has been bright under Ismail, and referring back to the start of the video, I said how Barnsley were able to reevaluate their position in the league and steady the ship a little. And that's what they've been able to do. They currently sit 12th in the championship. In just over three years after the takeover, expanding their search for players to European clubs. We can see that there's been an emphasis on Austrian players coming in with five of them. And two of them being Frieser and Solbauer have the second most appearances this season, showing that they're playing a big role in the team. The player to have played the most minutes so far is Danish centre-back Mads Jule Andersen. He was signed in the summer of 2019, 21 years old from AC Horsens for £900,000. This is a top example of how the scouting around Europe has led to a player becoming an important player at such a young age. They have, of course, continued to scout in England and pick players that they can see growing further. A good example was very recently centre-back Liam Kitching joining from Forest Green Rovers on January 5th. Similar to Ethan Pinnock, another centre-back who came from Forest Green Rovers. So Barnsley looking to do something very similar again. The strategies put into place to gain an advantage over other teams in the English Football League are starting to show on the pitch. Barnsley will be hoping that after going through a few managers, they can settle on one that can take the club forward, keep ambitions high and continue their successful trends. A lot of work still to be done in improving the squad, looking to score more goals and a further understanding of how Ismail wants Barnsley to play. But at this moment, with progression being made and improvement in results and performances, we can only question how high can Barnsley set their ambitions. I recommend that you don't miss out on future videos. Subscribe to Route 1 and like the video if you did enjoy.